ओके हेलो नाइन्थर्स एंड वंस अगेन वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून एंड वेरी गुड इवनिंग टेक इट वेन यूल बी सींग इट एंड वेल हेलो होपिंग यू आर डूइंग वेल यू आर डूइंग फाइन एंड ऑल्सो होपिंग यू डिड वॉच द जोग्राफी वीडियो विच आई हैड और विच आई हैव अपलोडेड टूडे एंड वाई आई एम आस्किंग यू टू वॉच दिस और वाई आई एम आस्किंग इफ यू आल हैव वॉच इट बिकॉज इट डज कंटेन इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट ओशन करेंट्स and ocean currents uh, along with coriolis effect and those are the things are mentioned in that video ocean current is a very important thing which has to be kept in mind not only for your exams not only for your course not only for the syllabus but also because it does uh, affect the way we live it does affect the climate which we live in and it does affect the whatever you are seeing is happening around us the uh, ocean currents the wind which is there the so the winds the ocean currents these all are very very important things which actually uh, are helping or which help in the way or which uh, determine the way we see or in which determine the climatic conditions in the place where we are so uh, if you haven't already seen it please do see it and not only my video you can watch any video which is uh, wherever you can or not only videos you can uh, get to know about them by reading so you your source can be in like uh, while we are talking of source the source of the delhi sultanate there are many sources uh, the literary sources are there then we have the monumental or the archaeological sources so there are different sources and uh, although the literary sources has been removed from your syllabus and only the archaeological sources are, and that is the qutub minar is there but then keep in mind a few very important literary sources we had the prithviraj raso it is very important uh, prithviraj raso by chan bardai and uh, these uh, then we have uh, the uh, writings of barani so these are a very uh, these are very important uh, literary sources which are actually needed uh, so as to understand so these literary sources are very very important so as to if we have to recreate or reconstruct these periods the period of the delhi sultan then we have the archaeological sources the archaeological sources these contain the monuments there are different monuments which have been or there are plenty of monuments which have been made by the people or built by the people of the sultanate who we only the qutub minar is mentioned but it is not only the qutub minar which was created or built by them there are so many numerous monuments we have the firoz shah kotla uh, mosque the firoz shah kotla the firoz shah kotla the firoz shah kotla was a fort itself so these so many different things that uh, constructed i advise if possible go to the internet search the web and you'll be getting so many different monuments which were constructed in and around part uh, delhi so not only the qutub minar also the qutub minar is one of the most important source and is one of the most important landmark of the delhi sultanate period now about the qutub minar we will talk later uh, because i want you all to visually uh, appreciate the qutub minar while you are read about it. so before uh, we do about the qutub minar let us just move on to the slave dynasty now the slave dynasty the slave dynasty uh, it was started by qutubuddin aibak and this qutubuddin aibak he was not a slave of that kind uh, he was not a slave as in he had not, no power to say anything back then the turkish rulers what they used to do was that they used to hire a few people so as to be their bodyguards because a few groups of people a few tribes in the central asian parts or central asia there are a few tribes which were very loyal and they could be very good bodyguards and the turkish rulers and the other rulers of those region they used to hire these bodyguards and these bodyguards used to they were not just they had a say they were not a slave as in uh, they were not bonded to a person who was hiring them they were uh, slaves because they were born of slaves uh, these are when we are talking of qutubuddin uh, aibak qutubuddin aibak was a slave born of free parents so it is not that he was a slave which was uh, fam- uh, he did not belong to a family of slaves as in uh, his father was a slave and uh, his father's father before that it was not that qutubuddin uh, aibak's parents were free people and qutubuddin aibak was hired by you know mohammad ghori and mohammad ghori after mohammad ghori came to india defeated the indian kings and um, he left behind the empire and the empire was a remnant of mohammad ghori and 
and he crushed a many number of rebellions in India and uh, he was, before he came onto the throne, he was having a large number of places under his control. But he died only in four years uh, of his rule. He ruled from 1206 to 1210 and thus he did not get time to establish a uh, sound system of administration. You will find similar to his story, uh, there is another story in the Mughal Empire, uh, we have Humayun. Humayun also could not rule for long, he ruled for two times. Once he ruled and after that he was chased away by the Afghans and again he came back and treated the Afghans again sat on the throne. But then he could not rule for long and whenever a king is unable to rule for long, what actually happens is that you have to keep in mind is when a kingdom is set up, when a king captures uh, land, when a king captures uh, different territories and he sets up a kingdom, what actually happens is that it is the king and the king is now uh, capturing this area and after he has captured this area, the other parts which are outside uh, his captured area, they will also be wanting or they will be revolting against this king because they are people sitting here. So he has to face many revolts, he has to punish many revolts, he has to look after, uh, he has to keep his kingdom strong, he has to do such things so as to make his kingdom a very powerful and strong one. So he does not get enough time in his initial years of his rule so as to make good administrative changes. You cannot, no king can make any good administrative changes until and unless the king is, uh, he knows that his borders are secure. So over here, Kutubuddin never could not make much administrative changes or could not make much uh, or good administration because he did not do it for long. But he constructed two very good things, uh, two very good mosques. The Kuwait al Islam Mosque. The Kuwait al Islam Mosque, over here you can find the Kuwait al Islam Mosque. Very important to keep in mind. This Kuwait al Islam Mosque, not mentioned in the book or in your book also, I The Kuwait al Islam Mosque, which is there in Delhi, it lies in the Kutubinar is, uh, the Kutubinar which you see over here, this over here, over here what you see is actually the Kuwait al Islam Mosque. The Kutubinar is not only the Kutubinar standing for the it is a whole complex and it had many uh, mausoleums, many other tombs uh, it had. It also has the tomb of Hindu Kutubinar, Kutubinar complex. It is a huge area actually. If you have visited the Kutubinar complex, you will know it. If not, you can always Google it and you will be getting so you can find over there, you find that it's a huge complex, a entire complex which has many different structures, many different archaeological structures. So over here, uh, he constructed the Kuwait al-Islam Mosque in Delhi and also he had the, he made another mosque in Ajmer. Ajmer Sharif, uh, Ajmer is there uh, somewhere near Jaipur in Rajasthan. And he also started the construction of the Qutub Minar which was completed by Qutub Minar, his son in now the Qutub Minar over here is not named after, the Qutub Minar is not named after the Qutub Minar. The Qutub Minar is named after this famous Sufi saint, Qutub Bhakti Arkhati. So keep this in mind, Qutub Minar, uh, because Qutub Minar built the Qutub Minar, it does not mean that his name, uh, because of his name, even, uh, or because of his name, this monument was named after Qutub Minar. Qutub Minar was named after Qutub Bhakti Arkhati. But then, uh, then Iver, he also shared the same name, so you can uh, think of it as such. Next, after Kutubina, uh, sorry, I mean, after Iver came Iltutmish. And Iltutmish from 1211 to 1226. Now, uh, what happened was that he was, uh, Kutubin Iver was succeeded by Aram Shah. Now, Aram Shah was not a very good actually, and Aram Shah could not rule properly. And was uh, the nobles conspired against him. Nobles of Kutubuddin Ayyubad's court, the nobles as in the ministers, the ministers they conspired against him because they were not satisfied with Aram Shah's rule and they wanted Aram Shah to post from the throne. And after Aram Shah was removed, uh, he was replaced by Iltutmish. And it was Iltutmish who is considered as the real person who actually killed this empire, the Delhi Sultanate, or he actually consolidated what Consolidation means to bring together. You have seen Mummy uh, uh, when she needs the dough for making roti. What does she do? She brings in all the flour from the, all the sides, puts it water, and then she leaves it from leaves it in properly. That is consolidation. One example of consolidation. So here, Dilthutmish was the one who actually consolidated the Dalkishu. He brought together all the uh, territories which had been conquered and he 
we established it for you. And it was a Tutmish who brought in this uh, Turkish this uh, Tutmish who brought in the Turkish rule properly in shape in India. And he made Delhi his capital. And he was the first Turkish ruler to introduce uh, purely Arabic coinage. It means previously the Indian coins which were used or they were having Indian scripts and maybe written in Sanskrit, maybe written in some other uh, local language. But he brought in purely Arabic coinage. So Arabic coinage as in meaning that you can see over here the coins of Iltutmish and whatever was written over here, over here that was in Arabic. So uh, he brought in the different cultures uh, from the south uh, central asian parts of india to uh, central asian parts to india and because his sons were incompetent incompetent as in iltutmish knew that his sons could not maintain his empire which he had chosen so painstakingly built so he left his uh, kingdom to his daughter razia sultana so razia sultana we'll be talking about razia sultana and then we'll uh, be talking of the other kingdoms after this uh, in the next video till then please take care stay safe be safe and stay out of harm's way thank you